work to do here, serious work. So you and your friends are just going to have to find some other place to play. Play? Well, that's what it is, after all, playing. I've got a Wait a minute, wait a minute. What makes you think putting on a show is just a lot of laughs? You ought to try it sometime. Mr. You ought to try rehearsing all day, knocking yourself out in the same routine so you're doing them in your sleep. When I was a kid starting out in show business, you had to be what was known as a triple threat. That meant you wanted to be able to dance, sing, and handle dialogue. When I think of a performer who fits that bill, I think Gene Kelly. He not only fit it, he defined it. The precision, skill, and imagination with which he executed his craft broke boundaries and continued to influence modern dance everywhere. Muscular and well-defined, Kelly excelled in sports and prided himself on his athletic abilities, a talent that would serve him well both as a performer and choreographer. To look at him, he was almost like an Olympic athlete. He was so fit. In fact, Kelly thought of himself as an athlete, and it shows in his dancing technique. He was the dancing man of the people. Kelly once said of himself, if Fred Astaire is the Cary Grant of dance, I'm the Marlon Brando. He was grounded to the earth and utilized his entire body as opposed to the hoofing style of only dancing from the waist down. People might think dancers are always on the beat of the music. A good dancer is always ahead of the beat. They make the music happen. And Gene Kelly made some beautiful music. He preferred tight-fitting, working clothes to accentuate his muscularity. Yet when the number called for it, he looked just as good, just as at home, in formal attire. You read about very physical stars like Douglas Fairbanks, swashbuckling across the screen, swinging on ropes and all that. Kelly could do all these things and knew how to incorporate them into his dancing, often to the worry of studio executives who discouraged him from performing his own stunts for fear their valuable asset might hurt himself. Sometimes he would use his athleticism in bits of physical comedy. In the art of slapstick, Kelly could hold his own with the best of them. Take a look at him with Debbie Reynolds and Donald O'Connor. You know the number. Good morning, good morning. Always searching for something new, Kelly loved incorporating simple props into his routines, whether it was a mop, a pair of candles, or an old newspaper. He made it look effortless and natural. Kelly also had a fiercely competitive nature, a trait that would earn him a reputation at MGM as a hard taskmaster, not only with his co-workers, but with himself as well. Now listen, you're gonna buckle down and get to work from now on like everybody else. You're gonna play this part, you're gonna play it the way I want it if I have to drag a performance out of you with my two hands. Dancers and choreographers live in a highly disciplined world. They give 110% and expect nothing less from those working with them. I have a few simple rules, and I have to insist on them. I call them my three Ps. The girls have to be prompt, persistent, and, and perfect. perfect. Everyone's, Everyone's born, born with two legs. legs. Being a good dancer isn't good enough. It's very clear. Our love is here to stay. Then there's Kelly's vocal abilities. He was one of the musical stars whose singing was like a natural extension of his speaking voice. When he played a scene and he started to sing, it was as if he was still talking, and this gave his song a sincere quality. He had a high distinctive voice. Nobody sounded like him. I'm glad I met you. You wonderful you. There's an old maxim when you're making musicals. You sing when you can no longer speak. You dance when you can no longer walk. You're like a breath of spring. A whole new thing has happened. The one at its best is an extension of the other. Gene Kelly embodied that idea. Then there's Gene Kelly, the actor, with his handsome face and charismatic smile. He was a natural leading man. He had that small scar on his left cheek. 
It added a rugged quality to his everyman good looks. The ladies loved him. He was charming and sure of himself. So long, baby. Don't forget to write. All right, man, all board. When playing a dramatic part, Kelly brought the same integrity and professionalism he did to his musical roles and displayed acting gifts that often surprised his critics. In Inherit the Wind, Kelly held his own with old pro Spencer Tracy. No easy task. You know, Hornbeck, I'm getting damn sick of you. Why? You never pushed a noun against a verb except to blow up something. You know, that's a typical lawyer's trick. Accusing the accuser. What am I accused of? Contempt of conscience. Sentimentality in the first degree. One of my best memories is the time I met Gene Kelly. I had recently made a film at his alma mater, MGM, called Pennies from Heaven. I performed a big dance number. There I was on the soundstage with the same parquet floor where Kelly and the other MGM stars had performed their tap routines. He'd seen the film and was wonderfully generous in his comments to me. His words gave me a terrific boost. That was Gene Kelly. Charming, gracious, off-screen as on. Song and dance man forever. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Christopher.